Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to the channel. Today we are doing another reaction video and this one has been requested a ton. And I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, you've already seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail, you know what you're here for. I'm gonna be reacting to Dax's Dear God. I've, I've heard the song before, I've, I've listened to it. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I've been a little bit afraid of this song because it's straight up raw. Now if, if, you're, if you're used to this channel, uh, I, I wanna throw this out there. There was some swearing in this song um, and, and in this song, Dax asks some real questions. And you can tell that there is a real pain and a real disconnect and a real need for understanding. Uh, and so I just, I'll completely want to throw that out there, um, that this is a hard-hitting song. Uh, and there's some language, so just, just you, that is my, my warning for this reaction is there are some language, but I'm going to do my absolute best to, to listen through it um, and, and understand where Dax is coming from and what he's saying and, and give my perspective as both a, a once unbeliever, um, now as a believer and now as a pastor, um, who's had a lot of these same thoughts. Uh, so with that said, let's just, let's get, let's get into it. All right. By the way, guys, I stream over on Twitch every Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. So, uh, if you want to come and give me a recommendation live, you can come over on Twitch stream pretty late at night, usually 11 o'clock central time to about 2 AM. Uh, so come give me some, uh, give me some feedback. Let me know how, how I did or, or hang out with me as we play some games uh, and have some fun. Sometimes we do these reactions live on stream as well. So if you have a recommendation, we may stop everything and record a reaction video to it. So Anyway, if that sounds like something you'd have fun with, want to do, come over, hang out sometime. Uh, with that said, let's get into it. Oh, do you believe in God? Yeah. Immediately, we're, we're seeing Dax, um, I, mean, I mean, kind of portraying Christ, which is, is the foundation of Christianity, is, is not only Christ, but actually the crucifixion and the resurrection. I mean, that's the strength that Christianity has. And so uh, immediately, I mean, you know, 30 seconds in the video, we see um, this representation and, and showing kind of the brutality of the act as well. So he starts off, and, and like I said, I've heard this song, so I know he's going to repeat it at the end, uh, but he does state that he is a believer, and, that, and that's interesting to know. That's interesting to know that he is a believer. Now, as we get in the song, he's going to talk about some hard stuff, man, and I want you to know that if you're here and you're a Christian and you've struggled with these questions, it's okay to struggle. Even as a Christian, a follower of Jesus, it's okay, it's okay to struggle. It's, it's okay to not have the answers. It's okay to have some doubts. It's okay to ask some questions. There's an entire book of the Bible called Lamentations. It's just a book of lamenting, complaining to God. God is big enough for our questions. God is big enough for us to, to ask Him, to pray to Him, to beg Him, right? He's, he's big enough for that. Dear God, there's a lot of questions that I have about the past, and I don't want to hear it from a human. You made it, so you're the last person that I'm ever going to ask. Tell me what's real. Tell me what's fake. Why is everything about you a debate? What's the point of love? Every time I showed it, I was broken, and it's forced me just to only want to hate. Why is it only one you but multiple religions? Why does every conversation end in a division? Why does everybody want to tell us how to live, but they won't listen to the same damn message that they give? Tell me how to feel. Tell me... Oof. Okay, okay, let's just let that, a lot, a lot just came out right there. Immediately says, I don't want to hear it from a human you made, so you're the last person that I'm ever going to ask. He says, tell me what's real, tell me what's fake. And this is such a, a big question because we're constantly surrounded by fake things. And even goes on to say, um, why is there only one you but multiple religions? And, and I think that for, that's because human beings have been creating for themselves religions. They've all tried to replace God and build up gods that would suit their needs and their desires. Why did every conversation end in a division? And I think just that because a lot of times 
Um, this is such a polarizing topic, talking about religion, talking about you know Christianity. It, it's like talking about politics. It's just so polarizing. Uh, and that every conversation has to lead to a division. People take it so personally. And one thing um, I love to do is I love to have conversations with people that are of different religions and come to mutual understandings on things. Um, I do personally believe there is one God and there is one way to heaven. In John 14, 6, it says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So I do believe that the only way to get into heaven is through Jesus, though the blood that was shed by Jesus. But I would love to have those conversations and, and kind of go through this. Yeah, let's just, let's go. What's wrong? I tried to call, pick up the phone, pick up on my own. Everybody says you coming back to man. Why the hell is it taking so long? Why do I hurt? Why is there pain? Why does everything good always have to change? Why does everybody try to profit off another man's work than destroy it just for monetary gain? Tell me. Mm, okay, okay. I'm trying to like, I, I, he, man, his, it's so good. I, I almost don't want to stop, but I, I, I want to, I want to talk about parts of this. Um, and, and, and every, oh my gosh. Okay. All right. So right now he says, I tried to call, pick up the phone, pick up. I'm on my own. And so what he's talking about right now is he's tried to pray. He's lifted his words to God. I'm sorry. He's lifted his words to God and it doesn't feel like God has answered him. And we've all lifted up those prayers and, and, and I'm, I'm a pastor and I've lifted up prayers that I didn't feel like God had answered, but I've also lifted up prayers in the midst of a dark season. I lifted up, I'll, I'll, I'll quit, I'll, I'll take the shroud of, uh, of coverage off of it. My mom passed away and she spent several weeks um, in, in a coma and, and I prayed daily for her to come out of it. And it didn't feel like God was picking up the phone, just like what Dax just said. It didn't feel like he was listening. It didn't feel like he was doing anything. It didn't feel like he was doing what I wanted him to do at that moment. And I begged and I pleaded and it never happened. And my mom did pass away. And it was whenever I came out on the other side, because in the midst, in the midst of, of the storm, in the midst of, you know, my mom being sick and, and going through all this, I didn't see that God was doing anything. But it was when I came out on the other side that I could actually see that God was in fact at work and moving and doing things. And, and, and a lot of the things that took place and the move that went the way they did, it was for my own good. It was for my sanity to help me as I got through that. And yeah, I lost my mom and it made me sad, but I also knew that she was no longer in pain. My mom had been sick for many, many years. And I knew that day that she was absent from the body. She was present with Jesus. Now it was hard. I had to get over that. I, I, had, to, I had to mourn and I had to get through that. And I had to question God but I was able to see that God was actually doing things even when I did not recognize it in that particular season. And so I, I will say this, that God doesn't always act the way we want him to, but if he were truly a superior being, we would expect no less. It says that his thoughts are greater than our thoughts, his ways greater than our ways. So it would seem that he is working things together in a greater way, okay? I'm trying, I'm trying not to talk for too long, but there's just, he's, he's throwing so much information. I really want to break down some of it. Um, and I know that he talked about um, why do I hurt? Why is there pain? And this all comes back to creation. If we look back to Genesis 1, God created the earth. He created all creation. Perfect. There was no suffering. There was no pain. Um, there, there was no disease. There was no death. There was no hate. Um, none of those things were present in the beginning it was our own rebellion away from God that broke perfection and allowed sin, death, and suffering to enter into this world. But the beautiful thing about that is that's not the end of the story. We get to go back to where there is no pain, where there is no suffering, where there is no depression, where there is no anxiety, where there is no racism, where there, where there is no hate. We get to go to that when we go to heaven. When we move from this life into the eternal life with Jesus, we get to experience perfection once again. So yes, there is pain and there is suffering here, but we look forward to a future. We have a hope in a future that does not have that pain. All right, let's go. Are you black or are you white? I don't even really care. I just really want to know what's care. right. They've been saying one thing, but I've been looking in the book, and it seems like they've been lying for my whole damn life. Tell me where I'm going. 
nowhere. Is it heaven or hell? I just hope this message greets you well. Had a dream that I was walking with the devil. Don't remember how it feels, but I swear that I remember the smell. Looked me right into my eye and told me everything I wanted could be mine if I gave up and decided to sell. But I said I'd rather die than get mine. Now I'm here. No fear, one man with a story to tell. Dear God, where were you when I needed it? When I fucked up and repeated it. When they set the bar and I exceeded it. My life is like a book that they've been judging by a cover, but have never took the time to fucking read the shit. I remember telling you. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, so much, so much. I mean, immediately I say, hey, where am I going, heaven or hell? And I can tell you right now, we can have that answer by if we have and place our faith in Jesus, we, we trust in him. Romans 10, 9 says that if you say with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that he died for your sins, that you could be saved. It's as, it's as simple as that. Now, the other parts of following Jesus are hard. Just like he just said, where were you when I needed it? When I messed up and I repeated it, when they set the bar and I exceeded it. First of all, those bars are just fantastic. But there are going to be difficult times in this walk where we don't know where God is. But faith is not trusting that God's going to do what we want him to do. Faith is trusting that God is good. And in his word, he says he will work all things together for the good of those who have been called uh, who love him been called according to his purpose. So we have to trust that he is working it together for good. You my goals and my dreams, but you didn't even answer, so I guess you didn't believe in it. I remember sitting with a gun to my head trying to ask you for some help, but I guess you didn't believe in it. I don't want religion, I need that spirituality. I don't want a church, I need people to call a family. I don't want to tell my sins to another sinner just because he's got a robe and he went to some academy. I don't want to read it in the book, I want to hear it from you. Don't want to learn it in my school because they're hiding the truth. Don't want to talk about it to another fucking human being, and that's the only reason that I even step in this booth. Dear God, how do I take this darkness and turn it into light? How do Okay. <laughs> I don't want religion. I need spirituality. Yeah, that's where it's at. You see, uh, not, not to sound cliche, but when people say Christianity is not about religion, it's about a relationship, it sounds cliche, but it's true. We don't place our faith in practices. We don't place our faith in being good enough. We don't place our faith in any of those things. Our faith is solely placed in the person of Jesus. Jesus, who, who, who came down from heaven, who loved us so much that he laid his life down and died for us that became the spotless land, the sacrifice that we needed to be saved. And we have a relationship with Jesus. Yeah, I'm with him. I don't, I don't want religion. I want spirituality. I don't want a church. I want a family. And that's exactly what church is supposed to be, a family. All right, dear God, how do I take this darkness and turn it into light? It's the question he just asked. Do I believe in a concept where I speak to a man I've never seen with my own two eyes? How do I know that religion wasn't made just to separate the world and create a whole disguise just to keep us in these chains while the rich get richer and the poor pray to you and perpetuate a lie? How do I know this ain't some big joke? How can I have faith when there is no hope? How the hell does one man have a hundred billion dollars and we still have people on the street that are broke? There's a lot of things I want to talk about and get off my chest. I can't sleep because the devil won't let me rest. I used to know a fucking pastor in a church and I can still hear the screams of the kids he will fucking molest. Dear God, do you hear me? Ugh. That's hard. A lot of that, I mean, a lot of this is hard. This is stuff, like... His, by the way, I have the lyrics pulled up here. It's the only way I can, I can keep up and try to address some of this stuff. He says, how do I know this ain't some big joke? How can I have faith when there is no hope? How does one man have $100 billion and we still have people on the street that are broke, right? He says, how do I know that religion wasn't made just to separate the world and create a whole disguise just to keep us in chains while the rich get richer and the poor pray to you and perpetuate a lie? So I will say this, at least within Christianity, Christianity was not created, at least the Bible that we follow, that, um, that, we, that act as our direction on how to be a Christian, was not written by a single individual, so to um, you know, perpetuate a lie. As he says here, it's not written to manipulate a, a culture. It's actually, the Bible is unique because it's 66 individual books. Like, 
So the Bible is not one solid book that was written. It was 66 books that was written by over 45 different authors over 1,500 years. And so it was not written at one particular time for a particular reason. It was God speaking through people over the course of 1,500 years, people that would never know each other, weren't necessarily related to each other, didn't know what everyone else was writing, but it was later put together to form one cohesive story. That was the story of God. And it was all, every bit of it, pointing to Jesus. And so that's one of the things is like, I truly believe that a lot of the proof that we can have of Christianity is in the divine inspiration of Scripture. In the divine inspiration of Scripture about how God put it all together and formed it together. I think it's impossible by today's standards with people that know each other to write a, a story that cohesively tells uh, the same story with over 45 different authors. It's incredible. Um, but I, I do understand a lot of the stuff he's, he's talking about. I mean, it's hard stuff. Like, why does someone have $100 billion and those people are broke? You know, why are some people living in paradise when there are people that, that are not? You know, why are we blessed enough? You know, if you're living in America and you're living in this country how I'm living, how are we blessed enough to live like this when a couple years ago I went to Haiti and I watched kids play with rocks and were absolutely ecstatic? Some kids were running around with only tops on because they, they couldn't uh, afford shorts. Like, I, I mean... How are we blessed to be here when there's that, you know, when, when there are people that are literally living in that? It's, it's, a, it's a hard question. I don't know that I have the answers, but I do know we live in a sinful, broken world, and there will not be peace, and there will not be no pain and no suffering until Jesus comes back. That's the promise we have in Scripture. And so as a Christian... And I'm sorry if you've met some bad Christians, but as Christians, we're supposed to do everything that we can to follow Jesus. And that means we are to show the love of Jesus to the world. Please do me a favor. Don't let Christians be the representation of Christ to you because we mess it up. Even me, even me, I'm on the, I'm on, I'm a pastor and I'm on YouTube talking about Jesus, but even I am a bad representation of Jesus. You see, Jesus loves you unconditionally. Don't let Christians, like I know that right here he talks about a pastor who, who, who molested children. And that, I mean, every time I hear that, honestly, it infuriates me to a place that I probably shouldn't be. Because that's, we just have such a holy calling and, and people use it to do disgusting things like that. And Anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go off on that subject, but don't allow Christians to determine your view of Christ because we do a poor job at portraying Jesus. All right, let's finish this song out. I'm supposed to fear you, but you ain't said shit. So maybe it's you who actually fears me. I don't know the answer. I just want to see it clearly. So many lies and a thousand different theories. All I want to know is who really made religion. Because I know it wasn't you, but don't nobody believe me. No more lies. No more death. Bring back King. Bring back X. Please, dear God, let their souls rest. Protect who's left and watch their steps. Dear God. Dear God. Dear God. I don't want to have to ask you again. I just hope that you know that I'm still a believer. So I'll end this all. By saying amen. It's text. First off, that video was crazy emotional. Um, and if you think that was emotional, um, just know that the portrayal that took place just now in that video actually happened. It actually happened to God. God who created human beings. God who loves you, who called you, who set you apart, created you on purpose for a purpose. That God loved you so much that he came and he died a brutal death. He was beaten, he was spit on, he was betrayed by the very people that he created. He was hung on a cross, and it was not the strength of the Romans, it was not the strength of the wood, it was not the strength of the steel that was piercing his hands or piercing his legs that held him on that cross. It was only the power of love that kept him on there, that he loved you and I so much that he gave up his life and died a brutal death so that we could be saved. And we can be saved right now. If you're here and you're asking that question, just real quick, you can be saved by placing your faith in Jesus. Say with your mouth, believe in your heart that he is Lord, that he died for you and that he rose from the dead and you will be saved.
Now get a Bible. Download the Bible app on your phone and start in the book of John in a translation like NIV and or NLT, it, 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 one of the newer ones, and just read and learn about Jesus. I love that Dax ended it with, yo, I'm still a believer. And so I'm going to end this with amen. Now, I, I don't know if Dax, I imagine Dax knows what amen means. It means so be it. And so to me, even the end of the song is an expression of faith that he lamented, absolutely. He let his feelings be heard. He let his feelings be known. And it was deep and it was raw and it was painful. And God wants that. I truly believe that God doesn't want us to run around praying, oh, thank you, God, for everything you did. I'm so happy for everything. God wants the real you. He wants a relationship with the real you. He wants to know your problems. He wants to know your pains. He wants to know where you're suffering. He wants to know the questions you have. God wants the real you. And I think what Dax did in the song is he lamented. He allowed his emotions to be poured out through his music, and it was beautiful. And it was raw. It was unfiltered. And that's what God wants. And I truly believe that God loves Dax. And I know that God loves you. And if you don't know God, if you've never you know, taken that step, then maybe you feel something right now. Do me a favor. Message me on Discord. You can join my Discord. It's down below. It's the quickest way to get in contact with me. Or I guess send an email. That's down below as well. And I'll help you. I, I, I'll, I'll, I will message back and forth and we'll work our way through it. We'll, we can call each other on the phone. I, I don't know how everyone do it and we'll work our way through it because I was once not a Christian. Up until I was 22 years old, I was not a Christian. But whenever I started to follow Jesus, everything changed. And I believe the same can be true for you today. Guys, I love you. I appreciate you for watching this. I know I, I got to do some more Dax. Uh, but his videos scare me, man. Dax, if you ever watch this, bro, your stuff scares me, man. These reactions, ooh, your words, bro. They're raw, they're deep. I love it. Um, but definitely going to be getting to some more of these. If you have any more suggestions, do me a favor. Leave them in the comments down below. Guys, I love you. Hey, God bless you. And hey, come hang out with me sometime on Twitch. I'd really appreciate it. All right, bye, guys.